Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. Mining Weekly editor Martin Crema joins me today to unpack the latest news in the mining industry. Welcome, Martin. Thanks, Ashni. Can you tell us about manganese metal company's uh, 150 million rand self-funded Plant One project in Pumalanga? You know, our uh, companies are becoming like as enterprising as our Springbok rugby team. They're, they're becoming world beaters and they see what is needed in the world and then they quickly match it. And as far as you know, MMC is concerned, they're going to outstrip the Western world on this because only China can give the manganese sulfate uh, in this way. They are already producing this very pure manganese metal. So they're going to work on that so that what their clients in Japan and, uh, and uh, around the world need they will be able to give immediately with this small project, 150 uh, million rand project, so that they can get going fast. And while they're doing that, they will work on when they should move to the bigger project using ore, because this uses manganese fines. And then they will move to a bigger project with using manganese ore. But the way they're planning it and the, the, the complexity of it, they've grasped, uh, I think, better than anyone else in the world. So it shows you that, you know, out in Mbombela, you've got brains, man. Uh, tell us about the new gold recovery operation that was launched yesterday in the west of Johannesburg. Another masterstroke by South Africans. And I was talking about the Springboks, and as I was leaving, who should be coming in? But the former Springbok captain, John Smith. So, I got such a, so this is a sort of a optimism you're finding when, you, when you're going around, full of smiles, full of energy. Now, look at this company. You know, I think even the directors were lukewarm. Uh, their lawyers were saying this is high risk. And along comes Pan African and they turn what is dust waste into wealth <laughs> like you've never seen. And an absolute perfection of timing because here they're coming on under budget. It is a 2.5 billion rand project and they got it done in 14 months, which is unbelievable so ahead of time and they are f officially commissioning it now moving forward to get that gold out of the slime out of the the dumps on the the west Rand, mahali city close to krugersdorp Rahiso. and at the same time they're doing it at a cost below a thousand dollars an ounce so we see the gold price streaking to two thousand $500 an ounce, they talking about an all-in cost below $1,000 an ounce, which is really sending their business into a, a great new niche. You can see the share price reacting and you know the free cash flow is probably going to come through in 2026. Everything's facing the right way for Pan-African resources out on the West Rand. And they had looked all over Africa, you know, to, to uh, opportunities where they could go. And the biggest opportunity was within driving distance of their corporate office. And as they get there, they could see that this was 1.1 million ounces of uh, resource, which they bought at $1 an ounce. You know, an incredible story. And lastly, tell us about the downstream benefits from the relationship between Vanadium Resources and China Energy International Group. You know, this is something else now. Vanadium Resources, VR8, to be great if they're listed in Johannesburg, but they're listed on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, but focused in South Africa. You know, Yuri Vessels is chairing this. He's got a great resource there. <coughs> and having published, you know, what is in the grounds there, he's attracted the attention of China Energy. Now, I didn't realize that China Energy was like 20 times, maybe 30 times the size of Esca. I mean, this is a big company. They have now, they're already in Vanadium and they see this as another Vanadium opportunity. And as Yuri Vessel says, there's so many synergies that could come out of this. Looking at Vanadium is very interesting because the way it's being developed now with the electrolyte and the flow batteries, when you actually produce this vanadium and you get it into the market, you, you're not dispossessed of it if you're going to do those electrolytes mm -hmm. and the flow batteries because you rent out those electrolytes. So there's a circular comeback and you can 
you know, remarket these again and again, which is unusual for a mining company. We normally dig it out the ground and get it away. So a great aspect of this coming through, but the partnership with China Energy could be immense for this company because we see China Energy also involved with the Moy Plots Renewable Energy, you know, over 280 megawatts out there. That is going to be wheeled if they do reach this big agreement. But at the same time, you know, the engineering, procurement, construction side of this business <coughs> is being helped by uh, China Energy, which also has an engineering division. And then you can add the F to that EPC for the finance because, you know, with a balance sheet like that, it's going to help tremendously to get your plants built, the concentrated plant, you know, the um, leach plant. And hopefully the negotiations will uh, conclude so that we can have a very good project coming out at Steel Poor Drift in Limpopo. Thanks for speaking with us, Martin. Thanks, Ashni. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on the local and global mining industries. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Mining Weekly daily email newsletter.